Hello everyone, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Let's have 50 minutes of core. I hope you enjoyed the one hour challenge. I hope you pulled through. So let's now work all of our core of center from the center out. So first of all, lie on your back, keep your sacrum on the floor, create a little bit of a curve in your lower back. Head stays on the floor and then simply reach out. We've been doing this exercise for so long now, you should be knowing where to suck your belly in and how to hold your shoulders. So right now, I would like you to think about orientation and intention. So when you stretch your leg out, imagine your toe being pulled and when you lengthen your arm, imagine your pinky finger being pulled. And this goes for mostly all of these exercises that we're doing in this core 15 minutes. So come onto your belly and then push up into a, an elbow plank. And here the same thing, everything radiates out from your center. So the navel pulls in, creates this tension, this fire that can then radiate all out into your pinky finger and into your big toe. And that's where we're heading. We're heading into our big toe while lifting one foot after the other. And it doesn't really matter when you do this engagement and have this intention on your mind, how high you're gonna lift your leg because you know where your leg is going, you feel the engagement and you feel the work. Just focus on the fire in your center. Very good. I hope you love this. So just put the foot down. And this looks simple, but there's two intentions here. There's intention forward and intention backward. So when you're pushing forward, imagine the crown of your head is pulled forward. So you're, you're pulling the crown of your head forward and then your heels get pulled backwards. So it's not a pushing because pushing might create yourself to hunch or to crunch into your center, but I actually would like you to stay in this one long line. And when you're imagining you're being pulled, you're actually able to keep this line up and engaged without crunching, hunching, and getting shorter. So it's all about length at the end. Good, wanna come up? So a little bit of rest for your shoulders and elbows and wrists and arms. So we're just extending the arms sideways and then leaning onto the left side, lifting the right leg to the side. And since we're standing now, everything is out in the open. So open chain here for the lifting leg, open chain for your head, open chain for your arms. So you need to create a little more directions. First direction is up and down. Down is pushing into the heel, outer edges, big toe mount. Up is lifting all the way through the crown of your head. Then we have two sides. Pulling out through your pinky fingers to the sides, dropping your shoulders. Oh my God. And then there's the working leg that is engaging through the big toe to the sides. Oh my God. And did you forget breathing or not? <laughs> Same side, a little bit more energetic, but this is the same thing. So we're staying grounded through the heel, lifted through the crown, and then we're having two intentions here because this is an eccentric and eccentric move. So we're engaging into and out, which means pinky finger and knee are pulling together, and then pinky finger and toe are radiating out again. Two directions, in and out, in and out. And when you're pulling in, make sure that you're not just crunching and getting shorter, but you're actually imagining that you're rounding yourself over an imaginary barrel, and then you're radiating and shooting back out again. And it's all very quick. <laughs> What is she talking about? <laughs> Step out, same leg. So in order to engage the core here, I would like you to rotate your upper body 
even a little bit more than I was doing here. So the stepping out is just helping you to engage into the upper body contralateral movement. And the spine is a little bit like a spring. So we want to have this rotation in order to spring from one side to the other, have this kinetic energy stored, enter ligaments, muscles, little muscles, little tendons, connective tissue at the end of the day. So rotate those shoulders a little more than I do here to store the connective energy and engage your core. Wonderful. So you can shake, shake it out a bit. We're now changing sides. So everything that we did on the right, we're doing on the left. So start with the standing exercise and remember your directions. So engage up and down first. So you're stable. Means grounding a heel and lifting through the crown. Then engage left and right. You're pulling out from your pinky fingers to the sides and this should drop your shoulder cage, your shoulder on the rib cage. We don't have a shoulder cage. Shoulders are free. Yes, yeah, so if you need to step down, do that. And last we have the moving leg. This is engaging through the big toe mount to the sides. Don't forget your other directions, up and down, left and right. You doing wonderfully. I can see you all very concentrated, very concentrated and focused. So try this one with the same intention. First, engage your up and down, heel, outer edges, big toe mount, you're up, your crown of your head. And then try to bring this very energetic move into your two directions. So this is in and out, in and out. Contraction and shooting out. So your navel is engaged the whole time. When you're seeing this from the side, you're seeing that I'm not really crunching too much forward. The movement is coming from the legs and the arms mostly, and the body, the center, my core is mostly helping me to stabilize, which means it's engaged all of the time. Very good. You're doing fantastic. Good work, good job. Same side, same side, last one of this series. So we're stepping out with the left leg to the side. Right leg is still the one that's grounded. Remember to keep the weight shifted more to direction of your heel and not too much to direction of your toes because this might flatten your arches. So keep your arches up. This would be a great occasion to lift your toes a little because I think you're pretty much stable now. So lifting your toes will lift your arch. Remember that you do want to engage your core a bit more here. So this is good shoulder rotation. So do the shoulder rotation. Engage those arms contralaterally and start to getting that kinetic energy stored into your spine. And this will help you when you run to actually remember that the spine helps you, the spine helps you run. All right, getting back onto the floor. Superman, advanced Superman. And in order to help you keep your balance here, remember your direction. So right now we're having mostly two down directions. So there's always the one hand that's down, grounding with the mount of the index finger and the base of your hand. And then we're having just the toe mounts down. So here we wanna engage all those toe mounts down, mount of the index finger down and creating a fire in your core to be able to radiate out. Then when you lift, radiate out through the pinky finger and the big toe mount, and then change sides. Then the other directions to help you here is your tailbone shifting or pulling backwards and the crown of your head pulling forwards. Now let's do the plank knee runs and you can just exercise the same thing. This time you're having two hands on the ground. So two mounts of the index finger down. And you can focus a little bit more here on the spinal stability, on the spinal orientation. So the tailbone is pulling backwards, crown of the head pulling forward, creating a lot of length and direction in your spine.
very well. And this should help you to keep your hip points parallel to the floor so your hips are not sagging. Anyhow, if you're doing this very quickly, you will not find time to shift left and right. So even when you're going quick, there can still be direction, there can still be intention. And this makes movement cleaner and clearer for your body and what you want to do. Well done, you can have a down dog here if you want to. Otherwise, let's go for this very challenging, advanced side leg lift. So this is more for the core this time. So you can, on, you can or cannot do the side leg lift here. If this is too challenging for you, just keep those legs parallel one on top of the other. Lift those hips. And the intention here is clearly from the outer arch down into the grass or ground and the crown of the head pulling out. And this should create the stability of this sideline hand pushing way down into the floor to keep your shoulder away from the ear. So we're having the down direction into the ground and we're having two sides because we're kind of flying here flying plank. Come on to the other side. Let's try this. And if you didn't do the leg lift, then don't do the leg lift this time. So we even out both sides. So on the other side, first push the hand way down into the ground. Shoulder leaves the ear. A lot of space between your shoulder and the ear. And then give yourself two directions. One from the outer edges and the outer heel to the crown of your head. This should create the length and the stability. And now if you want to or not, you can lift your leg all the way up to the side. Keep breathing. Keep your neck long, your chin slightly lifted. A lot of space and fire from the core out and radiate. Wonderful. <laughs> and we have, come on, we have two more here and then we're done. So side plank on the other side. If you need a little bit of break for your shoulders, then just pause the video, breathe for 10 seconds and come back. So we're lifting here onto the side. You can do this also as a static position on the knees. So whatever you're doing, Repeat those steps to push this time the elbow down into the ground in order to descend, drop your shoulder, lift the chin, orient through the crown of your head and down into your feet. And if this is too much, you can just hold it or drop one knee to the floor. I know this is a lot. These 15 minutes core, it's pretty intense. So let's have one last one onto the side. So we're lifting those hips up. Perfect. Now I would like you to do the same as you did on the other side. So if you had the static move, if you had one knee down, one knee down, one leg up, just do the same thing. Cause this is also teaching your body that we have two sides, symmetry. Although we're not symmetric, but we always want to do because it's beautiful. Symmetry is perceived as beautiful. So lift those hips up and if you're just going for static, remember your directions into the heel, outer edges, out through the crown, pushing the elbow down, shoulder away from the ear. Perfect. Wonderful. Three more seconds. Just do one more. And you did it. So you can stand up and we're doing one stretching exercise here because otherwise I fear you might be a little bit shortened. So stand tall, drop your shoulder blades. Now two directions first, heels into the ground, crown of your head out, then grab your hands, lower your shoulders and then engage to the sides. And it's not that you want to like do a full arch and drop into the floor. You're more lifting up to the side, to the ceiling, to the sky, to the clouds. So you want to elongate rather than crunching to the sides. It's a side elongation. So all of this should have made you a little longer. 
improve your posture and I hope I'll see you back for the last one.